KTM has finally re-entered the big bike segment in India and it's come all guns blazing this time around. Four big bikes and the rest are all off-roaders. I'm going to walk you through all of them. We'll start with the bike the Indian public will be the most familiar with, the 890 Duke car. Essentially, this is a larger, souped-up version of the 790 Duke. It uses an 889cc parallel twin engine, 121 horsepower and 99 newton meters of torque. That makes it the torquiest middleweight naked you can buy in India today. And since this is the up-spec 890 Duke R, you get top-notch cycle parts. Brembo Stylima brake calipers, WP Apex suspension that's fully adjustable except for preload on the front. The eagle-eyed amongst you must have noticed that the European 890 Duke R comes on Michelin Power Cup GP2 tyres, but the Indian version comes on Continental Conti Sport Attack tyres. This is done because the 890 Duke R's that come to India ship from the Philippines. Now all the KTM's that are coming to India, the big bikes, they're CBU's. So that means the price tag that they'll command will be on the premium side. However, at rupees 14.8 lakh rupees, the 890 Duke R isn't too bad. It sits in between the Street Triple RS and the Ducati Monster SP, which is at almost 16 lakh rupees ex showroom. Moving on from the 890 Duke R, you've got the 890 Adventure R. Now, this is a range topping model in KTM's middleweight adventure bike family, and KTM insists that this bike is meant to be ridden primarily off road, although you can ride it on the road. 240mm suspension travel and similar internals to the dirt bikes should back up that claim. Although, it has an 885mm seat height. With the bike being on the paddock stand right now, I can't show you how that feels, but it is quite tall. Ergonomics are very neutral, very comfortable. You could do a long day of touring on the seasonally. Standing up ergonomics as well, pretty great on the 890 Adventure R. Coming to the price, at Rs 15.8 lakh, rupees, the KTM 890 Adventurer sits just a little below the Triumph Tiger 900 Rally Pro. Where the 890 Adventurer is definitely more geared towards off-road usage, the 1290 Super Adventure S you see here is definitely a road buyer's flagship ADV from KTM. Now this isn't the latest Super Adventure, I must say. That's a 3090 that just came out at ICMA a few days ago. But this is still not obsolete or anything. It still has a 1301cc V-twin engine. That's a previous Super Duke's engine. 168 horsepower, almost 140 newton meters of torque. That really helps out on the street. And these things that you see over here, that is actually where most of the fuel goes. So all the weight is nice and low. So your center of gravity is also low, which helps in handling. A couple of neat things that have caught my eye on the 1290 Super Adventure. One is this nifty little compartment for a smartphone. There's also a USB charger inside. Then you have this rotary windscreen adjuster. You can minutely adjust the windscreen per your preference. All this will cost you rupees 22.6 lakh. Now that puts the KTM right in between the BMW 1300GS and the Triumph Tiger 1200s on one side and the Harley Davidson Pan America and the Ducati Multistrada V4S on the other. That's actually pretty decent pricing considering this is a CBU from Austria. And now we have the flagship that KTM sells in India, the 1390 Super Duke car. Love it or hate it, there is no going to be missing this bike on the road thanks to its bright orange bodywork and that angry looking face. This is a 1350cc V-twin engine, 190 horsepower and 145 newton meters are its peak output figures. Now that might scare you and lure you into believing that the 1390 is an animal, which it can be if provoked, but KTM has actually given this bike a couple of nifty things that I think will make it quite friendly out on the road. For one, there'll be the abundant torque. For two, KTM has given this bike a remote preload adjuster. That should make adjusting payload super easy when you're carrying a pillion or luggage. The 1390 is a flagship Super Naked, which means a lot of electronics are on this bike. Traction control, riding modes, power modes, so on and so forth. Something that KTM has carried forward from Europe to India, which I'm not a fan of, is the demo mode. You see, for the first 1500 kilometers, you get access to all the electronic features of the bike. After which, some of them are electronically locked and you need to pay a fee to the KTM dealer to unlock those for you. While the Super Duke's output figures are certainly staggering, no doubt, some of its aura is also to be attributed to its mean bodywork. For example, look at that headlight. It screams angry to me. 
those header pipes those must be one of the thickest header pipes i have ever seen on a production motorcycle then you have this gangly sharp bodywork that really expands at the base of the tank and in typical super duke fashion you've got a nice single sided swing arm which is becoming a bit of a rarity these days alongside some of its big bikes ktm has also launched six new dirt bikes in the form of the 50sx 65sx and 85sx these three use two stroke engines ranging from 50 to 85 cc then you've got the 250sxf and the 450sxf the f in their name stands for four stroke and these are proper full size four stroke dirt bikes the 250sxf has a 249 cc engine that's rated for almost 47 horsepower but it weighs in at just 104 kilos then there's the fire breathing 450 sxf that uses a 450 cc engine that makes 63 horsepower but weighs in at just 107 kilos alongside these motocrossers ktm will also sell you the 350 excf enduro motorcycle now while this bike can be registered on the road in europe it cannot in india Here are the prices for all the KTM off-road bikes on your screen now. Now that I've told you about all the big bikes, let me tell you about how you buy them and how you service them. KTM tells us that in time there will be seven dealerships that will be exclusive to the big bikes and the off-road and dirt bikes. At the moment, there are two operational: Bengaluru and Pune, and other metro cities like Bombay following soon after. There will be a dedicated team to service the big bikes. but we're not yet sure whether there will be dedicated service centers for the big bikes that is an answer only time will tell